In this experiment, we'll be demonstrating Malice Law. Malice Law states that when linearly polarized light, for example, light emanating from a helium neon laser, is passed through a linear polarizer, the light will be attenuated uh, at, a, at a rate that is proportional to the cosine squared function of the angle between the linear polarization axis of the laser and the position of the uh, linear polarizer. So to do this, what we're going to do is take a helium neon laser mounted on, a, a, on its platform and we're going to pass it through a linear polarizer that has been mounted in the rotational mount designed specifically for a polarizer. Now, um, because uh, there is some uh, absorption and reflection of light as it passes through the polarizer that is due to factors other than the polarization uh, qualities of the polarizer itself, uh, we have to account for that and we do so by measuring the light before it enters the polarizer and after the light enters the polarizer when the two polarization axes are exactly aligned. Okay, And that is our factor K that is indicated in the, uh, in the lab write-up. So, uh, in this experiment, uh, the first thing we need to do is determine what the output power of that laser is. So, uh, with the laser beam on, we're going to take our power meter and we're going to place the detector head directly in front of the laser so that the light shines onto the detector itself and we're going to measure the power of the laser. Now because these power meters are battery operated and they may be out of calibration the actual power reading is not critical in this particular laboratory experiment because we are actually um, using normalized values. We are looking at the power of the light uh, at the output of the polarizer relative to the input uh, of the polarizer so that you know when we divide through uh, it's not going to be a factor so even though the reading may be slightly off it's not going to impact the overall accuracy of the lab so once we've measured and recorded the power coming out of the laser what we want to do is look at what hap look what happens to the uh, light as it passes through the polarizer and one of the first things we have to do is line up our actual rotational mount so that we are exactly uh, at zero degrees. And the way to do that is if, if you look at the top of the scale, the scale that has uh, zero through 90 degrees indicated uh, on either side. And what we want to do is position the rotating portion of this to line up to the zero degree mark. Then what we want to do is rotate the polarizer so that we get a maximum amount of light coming through. Now with the maximum amount of light coming through, that would mean that the laser's polarization axis is, is aligned with the polarization axis of the polarizer. So as I rotate the polarizer, you'll notice that it goes from absolute zero okay, to a maximum value. And as I keep rotating it, we can oscillate between max and min. There would be min, there would be max. So what I want to do is take my power meter and place it in front of the beam, okay, just after the polarizer, and by hand I want to adjust the polarizer while, while taking a power meter reading so that I am at a maximum value. Okay, so that is about right there. Okay, now, when I read the maximum value for optical power on the power meter, okay, that means that the laser's polarization axis is directly aligned with the axis of polarization of the, of the linear polarizer. And what we want to do is rotate the polarizer every five to 10 degrees and take a series of readings from zero degrees all the way to 90 degrees. For every reading, we will take a power measurement. So simply take, the, take your um, rotational mount, and I'm going to do it every 10 degrees. Okay? And if we look at this, instead of looking at the power meter, I'm just going to show you the intensity of the light as it falls on the screen. That would be at 10 degrees. I'm going to rotate it 20 degrees. Now I would be normally taking a power reading for every movement here. 30. 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 
and 90, and notice that 90 degrees, the power is all but extinguished. Okay? And that's what it should be, according to Mal's law. So, in conclusion, and as we rotate the polarization axis from parallel to orthogonal, okay, or perpendicular to the plane of polarization of the laser itself, the output will vary according to the cosine squared function, as indicated in the laboratory. And the goal of this lab is to see how close the power meter readings actually come to, uh, to the actual cosine squared function. And that is uh, spelled out in your laboratory experiment. So that concludes the lab on Mal's law.